unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. The Lord spoke to me about last year in um, November. I wrote to someone called a Bible. <laughs> Up to today, I don't reach it. I just touch it. You get it? Because God finishes what he must do with me before I, I really preach it. And it's wonderful that today when the man of God was sharing, he wrote of that particular scripture. Today I shared the same thing on radio. Today I was sharing from the same scripture of abiding in God. And um, there is an why sometimes we take too long to share certain things. I, I have someone who have not preached for five years and they're still in my closet. Eh? Because I'm first preaching out of the excitement that I've stumbled on God eh? in the spirit. I'm first preaching because I have stumbled on something to share. You get what I'm trying to tell you. Because sometimes our personal convictions are not necessarily grammar of the people in the church. You get where I'm coming from. But I'll give you just a sneak preview of why. The reason that's why I did that was one time I was in the same line. I, When you meditate on the book of Revelation chapter 3, it speaks of the church at Sardis. And it says, And to the angel of the church at Sardis I write these things, saith he that as the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He says, I know thine works. That means thou are working. That thou has a name. That thou livest. And thou art dead. They, they carried a name. But they live. I don't know that they carried a name but they live because they had something outside that looked like the Holy Ghost. You get it? I don't know that he carried the testimony that they lived because they had wonderful praise and worship. You get where I'm coming from. I don't know whether they say that they had a name that they live because probably they spoke in another language. I don't know whether they had a testimony that they lived because they had a wonderful cathedral or they had a nice church or they went to the best school. Did you get what I'm trying to tell you? I don't know whether the testimony that they lived was, was because there were certain things that there were works between them and make the stem that prove that they live. But to, the, to God, they were dead. You get where I'm coming from. To God, they were dead. And so where I'm coming from? I'm coming from a perspective of experiences of Luke where he says, abide in me and I in you. You get it? And the Greek word for abiding is translated as meno. Meno is translated, okay, directly means to be present. Get it. Those of you who know who are probably on on social media, if if you are present on Facebook, there is an icon that I think proves that you're present on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I don't know. Is that true? If you're on WhatsApp and you're online, there is something that proves that you're present. See, you can be on WhatsApp but not be present. You get it? You're probably your, 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 your absence, your idol, so to speak, last seen. <laughs> you get it? What supper is, puts up those icons of last seen at 7 a.m. or 7.35. But there are people who are online, and then somebody can ask, can ask you, how come you are online on WhatsApp at 3 a.m. in the morning? That means that they can tell the last time you were there. I don't know that you know what I'm trying to tell you. understand what I'm trying to tell you. They can tell the last time that you were there. But that is what's up. You, you get what I'm trying to tell you. 
and, and a man can be live on Twitter or Skype, whatever it means, he's present on Twitter or any other social world. And I liken that to the presence of being present to God. Again. So when they're talking about abiding, it's more than just I'm going to pray the whole lunch hour. But how many people are actually alive unto God? You get on to tell you how how constantly are we alive unto the Spirit? How constantly are we ready to respond and sink, so to speak. Let me use the word synchronizing with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I realized that our generation was living a place of appointing a few moments when we have to lift up holy hands because it was a Monday or a Wednesday meeting or a Thursday. It was a Saturday or a Friday overnight where we felt that the God was supposed to do something. It was a conference and just when we start up the spirit of God to come and do certain things. Again, and after the conference it was like any other day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I started to realize that the one thing that has meant probably my ministry and I believe many men of God of the Spirit here is how to abide in God. I mean, how to consistently abide in God. How to be present to Him every time. And that means that you can minister anytime. That means you can experience Him anytime. That means that you can relate with Him anytime. That means you can talk with Him anytime. That means He can talk back to you anytime. Because the agents of the Spirit in these last days is serving every time and every moment for His manifestation and, 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 and demonstration. We're not talking about demonstration of the Spirit where we get a crusade ground to put people on that ground. We're talking of a demonstration of the Spirit that is with me at the back. You get it? The other day I was seated in the bank and I was working. I was trying to follow up on a small report and a woman walked into my office and she started crying and crying and crying. And I told her, why are you crying? She said, there's something on you. There's something on you. There's just something on you. You get what I'm trying to tell you. I was present. Do you get where I'm coming from? I was present. I didn't say, God, there's somebody coming in the room. Let me try to pray so much that his presence will come in this room. And I, I didn't take time to first prepare. You get on trying to tell you. To, to see that the Holy Spirit, when he comes in the meeting, somehow they would find, so would find me ready. You get, I, I'm, not, I'm not the kind that has tried. And, and, and I hate that I have to prepare for the Spirit to move. I love that I must be present every time for the guy to be ready to move. That's called abiding. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So when this man was speaking, my heart was thinking. And, and, and I was pondering on the thought that sometimes what we've given the Holy Ghost are occasions. It's like we give him a birthday party or a Christmas holiday or, or a Saturday evening when we are free to have some hope. But listen, God, 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 God wants a consistent life. Hallelujah. And I told people, there is a place in communion in the Holy Spirit where you get I'll, I'll give you an example I no longer commune according to the flesh you get it? back in the day I used to think it was only locking yourself up in a room and and you just lock yourself up and you say now I'm locked up Holy Ghost have something and I love those moments I do them a lot in fact I'm quiet a lot at home I don't like talking I love being with the Holy Ghost but I realized that we cannot be in the room the whole day. Are you with me? I realized that we can't stay in the rooms, in our bedrooms the whole day. I realized that there is a point where the Lord had to teach me to commune with Him in the busiest environment. You get it? So it doesn't matter whether I'm following up on a report or I'm trying to check my GLs on the bank. I must be present. You get what I'm trying to tell you? I must. Be present. Hallelujah. Otherwise, Paul would not have met tents. My right? Jesus would not have been a carpenter. I get a hundred percent God. Yet with the fullness of God body. Hallelujah. So, this is more than just an experience of what the Lord wants to do in your life. I feel more that the Lord wants to cause you to abide. There is something so wonderful with the Spirit. When a man becomes present with God. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? 
you, you can like like Pastor Stephen said, you can go back to an old experience. Are you hearing me? And leave monuments. And Christianity that can only show the past experiences is not a life. It's not a life. You get it. The life in Christ has a consistent glory to glory experience. Till we might reach the full measure, the state of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I must warn you, Christians, before we pray, that a lot of people don't know God. <laughs> they think that they know God. Are you hearing me? There is a consistent life I've seen in the life of Christianity where men have given a very philosophical or political opinion about God but they don't really know God you, you can ask the man who is God and he cannot really tell you who is God you get what I'm trying to tell you I told people the other day my niece came with a swelling one time and she woke up with a swelling almost this size and she comes in my bedroom and says uncle I have a swelling here. Why? Because she visited Heart of Christ one time. You remember? Some of you belong to church. And they called her, come. I said, come. I laid hands on her. disappeared. She ran back to her mother. Mommy, he's gone. You get it? The next thing I know, she's at Green Hill telling everyone, my uncle, he prayed. You get it? So every time she comes back home, she tells me, uncle, Rita fell down. Can you come to school and pray for her leg? It's broken. You get it? So one of those days I was at home and then she hit a 180. You know what a 180 is? She stretched her legs straight, straight. And she sat down. She told me, Uncle, do it like me. And I said, darling, I can't do that. She said, you pastor. You can do anything. <laughs> but I thank God I've shown that little girl cry. So if she asks me, who is God? There was a time when I first done. There's a guy who one time came with a, what do you call that? It was a broken leg, so I put a plaster on it with both clutches. And we laid hands on the guy and we cut the clutch that night before we left the meeting and he started walking. And Fiona, Myra's son, got a picture and and drew it at school and the teacher saw it the teacher commented on it and then the next day the teacher asked the mother when she drops the boy what's up what's this your son drew this and and the mother's like Malcolm what, what was this she said this was the guy who walked when the was a great spray you understand we want this to even be now the kids books get it your kids books that your kid can draw a lemon walking or a picture of a blind guy opening, you get it? Because that would mean that the next generation will know God in a certain way. But I'll tell you the truth, many of us, our generations, where we were raised, we could not explain who Jesus was. Hallelujah. I mean, you'd ask your father, who is God? And they can't tell you who God is. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And I stand in that place where if a man should ask me, who is God? I must be able to tell him who God is. I, I cannot use words to express the God who is bigger than words. I, I must have the Spirit. So what am I trying to tell you today? As, as, we, as, as, as I grow up in God, I've said to cherish the place of being present to God. No, no, as in to be present. And I realized that we had forms of being present, forms of godliness, but without the power that rule. We thought that every time we close our eyes and say, Jesus, shout out to Jesus. We thought he was there. And many men learned the style and they would raise their hands and say, Jesus, but he wasn't there. Hallelujah. He wasn't present. Or they were not present. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, broken and contrite spirit he shall not work he cannot despise any man that turns to him he cannot fail to serve a man who is not present who is present hallelujah 
I believe something is going to happen today. I believe we're going to lay hands on some of you. And the reason I swear I want to lay hands on you is glory to God. Hallelujah. Let it be more than just the experience of the Spirit coming upon your life. But let it be an ever healed life of a man present to God. Alive unto God. And you're going to see that the miraculous is going to become simple. You're going to see that you're not going to struggle with anything in this life. Why? Because something, there's just going to be something about you. Hallelujah. Some of you here, and I'm telling you this as a man of God. The levels of laying hands by physical hands are going to come to an end. Or they are coming to an end in this generation. Because the testimony of laying on hands the very spirit of apostolos the apostolic line the right hand of fellowship the things that commit men to divine purpose and cause them to produce results in god because by reason of the gift of god and understanding that you have you can take a man to a place you can take a man to a place that can produce in him fruit i don't know whether you understand what i'm trying to tell you so it's not more than just releasing the anointing no if a man in the old testament can cross hands and the blessing leaves the firstborn and hits the second how about the man of the spirit i don't know you understand where i'm coming from if a man just can cross his hands in the old testament and he's blind and, and joseph tells his father hey father not that one who you've touched the hand on the older who is young and the other vast you get it still you put your left hand from the wrong guy and the blind father says my son i know but this is a man not of the spirit the bible says the first adam was a living soul he was not at a place where you are you get it he was not a place where you are they were not born again they were not born of an incorruptible seed they were not begotten of god they were not one with the spirit but a blind man could tell that the hand had to cross and this guy must be this one. Yet he was blind. Are you hearing me? So the New Testament man must see more than that. Now if that could cross the destinies of two boys, that now the older one serves the younger, you realize that a man's life was just changed. God switched the man's life destiny, but just hands. And now the place of hands to the New Testament creature is shifting for just the ability of these hands physically are you hearing me we have spiritual hands we have things that we can do by the spirit and men might not see them physical but they'll have effect in the spiritual why because the bible says our conversations are in heaven they are in heaven heaven is a realm it's not a place only it's a realm that means that our conversations are in heaven. It says, from whence we look, we look from a place higher than this realm. You get what I'm trying to tell you? Our administration is not subject to the limitations of the earth. Why? Because even though we have a human body, we're not human. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. And you get where I'm coming from? And now I see men cross their hands over nations. Because they might not be able to touch one individual. And this anointing will leave their hands and touch every individual in that nation. If a man in the old can get to water and just stretch out his feet, and the whole sea understands that from here up to there, they must cross over. How much now the man of the spirit? The Bible says that Joshua stopped the sun. And the Bible says on that day, God never hearkened to a man like he hearkened to Joshua that day. But you're not men. You are sons of the Most High God. So stopping the sun is an Old Testament dispensation. He has said that now we are established on a better covenant with better promises. And the Bible says and their testimony could not be made perfect save with us. God having something better for us that their testimony would not be made perfect. The ministration of the Spirit upon you perfects Joshua. There is something Joshua looks upon your life and he says, No, I want what he had. Oh, no, I think you understand it now. Joshua looks at you and he says, I want that. 
why? Because this was the mystery that was hid from the ages, but the now revealed. Christ, not Joshua this time. Christ, not Moses this time. Christ, not Elijah this time. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ was the force by which Joshua functioned. You are that force. You are that force. Why can't we believe God? Why can't we just believe God for something crazy? Is that here? You are the kind of man. Listen, they were not speaking of a spiritual man here. They were speaking of a kind of man. But he had a mind to think, let me get up this street. You're spiritual. You're spiritual. There's a certain way you can want it. There's a certain way you can want it. Hallelujah. Somebody just raise your hand and speak to Jesus. Father God. Father God, we're tired of superficial Christianity. We're tired of a superficial Christianity. God, we need you. God, I need you. God, I need you. Rabba Baba 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 we are present God. We are present God. We are present God. We are present God. The spirit that brought revival in our nation. was not men who sat down and just had words and went back home. It was of men who tarried in the presence of God, who sought to see God. Hallelujah. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.